Fine. Let's get it. ReZero, episode three, season two, cut content from Mr. Any News. I hope we get a lot of lore about like what Echidna talked about regarding all the different witches and what they did. Echidna's tea party was probably the most important event from this episode. While I do believe that they did a great job adapting it, I think they could have done a bit more to explain what exactly was going on. Okay. In the novels, Subaru actually asked a few noteworthy questions and got some interesting answers in return. Yeah, this dude actually like not asking anything and leaving fucking pissed me off. Bro. Like you have this one chance to finally get all the answers that you probably could get and you leave and I'm like, come on, I get it for the fucking purpose of the story and the audience to not know everything. I guess it is better to do it, but. So, as we go through today's cut content, we'll learn more about who this Witch of Greed really is and why she invited Subaru to her tea party. Aside from that though, Episode 3 also skipped some of the most important details regarding Sanctuary so far. Okay. There was a whole bunch of cut scenes regarding Frederica's suspected involvement with everyone's captivity. Plus oh. the introduction of a brand- Frederica locked them up?! ...new character who should have been revealed towards the end. In addition to all of that, there was also the exclusion of an entire group within Sanctuary that seeks to do harm to Amelia. What? These were fairly important topics that should have been included. There's like people from a village that's super anti-Amelia or are they people outside of the village and just happen to be here? In this episode. So let's continue our cut content series and take a look at what exactly we missed out on. Okay. Before we get into the cut. Ad time? What are we getting? Content though. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. All right, VPN, y'all know what to do. Use your discount code for the free fund of subscriptions. Or the link in the description to get that 85% discount today. Whoa, 85! Now, let's get back to the video. Episode 28, The Long-Awaited Reunion, covering chapter two to chapter three of volume 10 of the light novel. Because Subaru had experienced death numerous times before, he felt that he had gained a fairly keen sense for danger. It wasn't so strong that it would prevent him from dying more often, but it did grant him a certain level- Some people think that this scene was hinting that Betelgeuse possessed Subaru's body. I don't know. Is it? Is it? Did Betelgeuse go in Subaru at this point? Did not- did Tape confirm it? Did the author Tape confirmed in a Q&A that Betelgeuse was in Subaru's body? He did. Oh. And here's the best part. He lied. You guys are wrong. He lied, guys. Don't you know? Tape lies and misdirects you. Why are you just listening to him, you losers? See how you feel? This is how I feel every day. Motherfuckers come to me gaslighting me saying that the fucking source material is wrong because Tape is directly misleading and their headcanon is the actual facts. <laughs> Thank you Shinoi for this sub. Thank you so much. But it did grant him a certain level of awareness while in situations like this one. It's for this reason that he was able to sense that the girl sitting before him was a far greater threat than both the white whale and sloth. Mm -hmm. So considering this was a situation that he had literally no control over, Subaru had no other choice but to accept whatever invitation it was that Echidna was offering. An invitation to have a conversation. Another instance where Subaru acts out of impulse and it just works out. There's been so many times in the anime where Subaru just does something out of pure impulse. And sometimes it's bad, but a lot of the times it's actually really good. And I say this because like obviously this is the part where uh, Subaru's uh, witch factor got stimulated and granted a higher resistance to be able to take the ordeal, I think. Sorry, the trial. But even before that, you know how he just like abruptly signed the gospel with his blood? That scene will never, I will never give up that scene. Like, that's another direct example. It hasn't paid off just yet. Maybe it has, and I don't know. But like, him just like writing shit in the gospel with his blood or other acts of impulse, like, that's gotta be huge. Their first topic of discussion was on how Subaru got to where he was. To clarify on what actually happened, Subaru wasn't physically moved through space, but instead put under the influence of a dark spell. Dark spell. It was a claim that Subaru found very hard to believe. But as he looked around to see what was a surreal view of rolling hills spanning infinitely into the distance, her words began to be more believable. Now, when he sat down to drink Echidna's tea, the reveal of it being something akin to her body fluid body spurred fluids. on a much more comedic conversation. Subaru dropped to his knees and tried to vomit out what he just drank, <laughs> stating that he didn't want to drink anyone's fluids without- Except Amelia's. ...being ready for it. 
which implied that if he was prepared, then it was something that he would consider doing. What? If he was ready for it, he needs to make up his mind to fucking drink Echidna's piss? Okay. Subaru only realized the perversion of this statement after he had said it aloud. So he tried to correct himself by saying that he wasn't inclined to be aroused by anyone's saliva or sweat. At least he didn't think so anyway. Emilius. In any case, once he realized that Echidna's tea wasn't coming back up, he shifted his focus towards the more concerning problem sitting in front of him. Unlike in the anime, Subaru did in fact have a few questions for Echidna. First, he wanted to know where exactly he was and if she truly was a witch. Yeah, I don't even know where this is. It, it just felt like some sort of like soul, like uh, like a different dimension. Like, you know in Tensura, the demons, without their actual bodies, their souls just exist in a different plane, a dimension? I thought like this is a similar thing. It didn't make sense for this person to be the Witch of Greed because Subaru knew that she along with the five other witches were all Ooh. killed by the Witch of Envy. That's right. And that's when Echidna explained that the ruins were- So can we then assume that this is where Satala killed Echidna? Like this is the Witch's graveyard. Echidna apparently died here. And I can't assume that this is where Satala killed Echidna then, right? Or is there like- Cause like knowing a show like this, I feel like even if you die, right, your soul could be still around and then what did Satsa then consume the soul somewhere else? I I'm assuming that this is where the battle went down. For actually her tomb. A grave that serves to hold her soul captive for all eternity. All where eternity. Where Subaru was now. So Satala did not consume Echidna's soul. I don't know how that shit works, because when you say consume the witches, I'm like, okay, you killed them, but I guess you also like absorb their entire existence, like their soul. But the soul it, right now, Echidna's at least, is in this sanctuary. Now, was simply Echidna's personal realm. Though she refers to it as her castle, it's actually something more similar to a dream. dream. Her dream. When her Subaru dream. entered her tomb. Dream. Hmm. I need more, I need more explanations. This is too abstract. His spirit was invited by Echidna's spirit into her Spirits. dream, Spirits and he dreams. accepted. Obviously, this wasn't something Subaru thought to be possible, but the way that Echidna spoke made it seem like there was no way that she was lying. She then went on to say something that Subaru found to be rather peculiar. What? Apparently, this type of realm is a place that he should already be familiar with. Be a coast place? Because... Bieko is a great spirit. Apparently this is Echidna's dream, but she, she brought Subaru and Echidna's spirit. I'm gonna assume Bieko's? As if to say that she knew he's been to a place similar in nature to this one. <sighs> is this when he calls upon Satala? Then we get to see this inner domain with Satala? I don't know. It wasn't anywhere that Subaru could personally recall, but once again Echidna Satala? didn't seem to be lying. Th this, like, I, I, I don't know what happens here. Right? Because like, yeah, he calls upon Satala by leaking, and then time stops, it seems like the hands show up. But I thought that like, this is still like the same plane of existence, unless this is Satala's dream? I don't know. He simply accepted that what she was saying was the truth. So when she said that this dream world wasn't something that he could simply awaken from, that's when Subaru started to realize the dire situation that he found himself in. You see, Subaru can't leave this realm without Echidna's permission. If Echidna really wanted to, she could very easily keep both his body and spirit captive forever. Really? So, he uses the term spirit in a very specific way, not soul, because we know spirits, right? We know of lesser spirits, and we know of great spirits. But he's saying spirit here, is this interchangeable terminology? Because like ReZero, again, it's very specific with their wording. So when he says spirit, is he just casually making a mistake? Or is this actually super a spirit? And that implies that everyone has a spirit. Soul? Mistake? It's a soul, right? Okay. Souls in a dream is what I'm going to assume instead of spirits. Forever. Luckily, that wasn't what she was planning to do. Because Subaru stumbled into her domain of his own free will, he was also free to leave whenever he wanted. The only reason he was even here at all was because Echidna was simply showing him the same hospitality that she'd show any other invited guest. Really? Roswell got all fucked up, but no. That was because of the trial, and this is not a trial, so... Echidna seems like a very reasonable person, and she just kind of starved for conversations and greedy about knowledge. If that was in fact the case, then that would mean that she had nothing to do with the crystal or Amelia. So, when...
Nothing to do with Amelia? I'm not too sure about that. Because Echidna says, so I see that is the root of your desires. And we know that Subaru's root of desires is Amelia. Everything is a driving force because of Amelia. Therefore, Echidna and Amelia may have some sort of connection. Or else why? You just find a random girl and she was like, oh, that's curious. I'm going to bring you in. No, there's got to be a personal connection. Subaru asked about the events that happened prior to his arrival. He was surprised to hear that she knew very little of what was happening outside her tomb. It wasn't the answer Subaru was looking for. But because there was no way of confirming it, there wasn't really much else that he could do. At the moment, that was all that Subaru wanted to know. So with no more questions to ask, he no longer had any reason to stay. What do you mean no more questions to ask, you fucking idiot, Subaru? What are you doing? What is a witch factor? What does it mean to stimulate my witch factor? Resistance to what? What is a trial? How, what is the association between a witch and an archbishop? Why is there only six archbishops right now? Because Zatala ate up all other six? Does that imply that an archbishop of MB is impossible? Or can I become an archbishop of MB because of the connection with Zatala? I'm not sure. What is the day of the ordeals? Why does Betrigus try to go for the day of the ordeals? But Lai and Regulus, they don't really seem to mention anything about that. If I kill the archbishop of Gluttony, will Rem get the memories back? Does Rem at this moment have two fucking horns? What is Roswell doing? But no. We don't get anything. We'll never get anything. Because if we did, then the story would be ended. His primary goal was to find Amelia. The longer he stayed here with Echidna, the longer that goal would remain unaccomplished. It may seem like he's wasting a huge opportunity here, but it's not like you can blame Subaru for being worried about Amelia. I mean, the last time he left someone he cared about alone, she ended up getting her existence removed from the world. True. So it makes sense that he would prioritize Amelia's safety over everything else. Even so, the fact remained that this was a very rare opportunity. Only after Echidna explained just how rare it was did he fully understand who it was that was sitting in front of him. The tense feeling he'd been carrying this entire encounter wasn't so much because of Echidna's threatening aura, but instead due to her insatiable curiosity. Greed. The way she looked at Subaru as if she already knew everything about him made her presence feel that much more oppressive. That's when Subaru decided to stay and ask a couple more questions. Okay. He asked, what are you and do you know the things I want to know? These were such odd questions that hmm. Echidna couldn't help but laugh at the nature of them. It was in that moment that Echidna acknowledged Subaru's own personal greed. A desire for knowledge that was very much similar to her own. I feel like it's not specific to Super though, because like everyone is greedy. Like like the seven deadly sins, like everybody exis exhibits a portion of seven deadly sins. Whether or not you like it or not, everyone has those moments, but like, okay, greed being mentioned from Subaru. As the world around him began to crumble, the darkness that took its place was something Subaru wanted no part of. He immediately knew that falling into such an abyss would lead to an inescapable end. So he paid Is this supposed to be like reference to constellations and stars in the space because we know how important those things are because a lot of the namings are also based on stars and the connections between different uh star groups and shit relates to about the relationship as well but i see some sort of like spatial realm and then this is very important right we get like a one-liner describing each witch and what they've done for the sake of the world paid close attention to the words echidna spoke next they were the unfamiliar names of the witches that were never recorded into history Mm. When Never Echidna recorded. finally spoke of the Witch of Envy, Satala. the only thing Subaru could feel- No one knows other witches' names, but only they know of Satala because Satala fucked up the world and she became such a, such a villain. But up until then, I guess the witches were very mysterious and secret. It was a powerful aura of death. Another question is, who created these witches into existence? Were you just born as a witch? Was there like a clan of witches in the past and this is their most recent descendant? Like, you gotta wonder about that too. Like, because like, when you say there's witches, I'm like, okay, these are very like omnipotent, mysterious, godlike beings in the world. But like, how did they become, you know, real? Names of the witches that were never recorded into history. When Echidna finally spoke of the Witch of Envy, the only thing Subaru could feel was a powerful aura of death. Death. Subaru had been trying to ignore Bubba, the restlessness Bubba. persisting throughout his body the entire time. But ever Trauma since finding out who Echidna was, he couldn't even force himself to look in her direction. It was a natural reaction that Echidna hoped would change but personally couldn't do anything about. Two triggers. She simply stared at Subaru as if anticipating the moment in which he would snap out of the intense state of fear he found himself in. That's where her tea comes into play. The resistance? 
Is that the stimulation of the Sloth Witch Factor and the resistance? Not only did this tea strengthen his resistance to Echidna's presence, but it- Resistance to Echidna's presence. See, I thought the resistance had to do something about, like, how Roswell got fucked up by the trial, but Subaru won't be, because... He's also been given, like, a qualification from Echidna, but that maybe is two separate things, yeah? It also activated his Witch Factor. Mm. For those who don't want to Active know what a Witch Factor- I want to know what a Witch Factor is. <laughs> I want to know. Should I know? What should we do? I really want to know, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Can I know this or no? I want to know. Please tell me. Ah! No, I can't know yet. Why can't I know yet? Why can't I know this yet? If I know, I'll be able to theorize on a different level, though. If I don't know, it kind of limits my theorizing because the creativity is, it is not fine. Why is it not fine? Explain to me why it isn't fine. Some pe most people are saying it's no biggie, it doesn't spoil. There's one person saying, oh my god, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I want to do it. <clears throat> I want to do it. <clears throat> I want to I wanna get spoiled. I want to get spoiled. Please. I'm doing it. I'm going in. But it also activated his witch factor. Yeah. For those what is who it? Don't want to Fuck know you! What I'm doing it. There is. Then go ahead and skip to the following timestamp. I'm doing it. But if you're okay with a minor spoiler, well, witch factors are what enable people to use authorities. And yeah, that's pretty obvious, right? I mean, a witch factor seems like you know a witch factor of sloth specifically, authority of sloth, unseen hand. So technically, there is potential for Suru to use Unseen Hand then, right? Authorities are the abilities that we see the Archbishops using. Okay. The type of authority that manifests within an individual is Our dependent Regulus on the person possessing factor. it. Meaning, Suru's authority of Sloth wouldn't yeah. be the same Unseen Hand ability as the previous holder. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's creative. Now it's not going to be just a generic same Unseen Hand over and over again. It could be a completely different power, but... The witch factor adapts to the person that has it and needs to be activated as well. And this is great, man. <laughs> Unseen feet, <laughs> toes come out. <laughs> Unseen dicks. No, um, I think that like one of the most frustrating things in Ray Zero is, is Subaru's lack of strength. As in like, he can't 1v1 people, right? He's, he's more of like a, like a strategist support utility type and, and because of the limitation it created interest in scenarios where he had to gather powerful allies to help him out but now with you know this witch factor activated as well as him having such a strong degree of the witch's miasma you know it's just like oh man is super gonna be able to you know be able to fight by himself at that point it's gonna be very nice right i i hope that he's gonna be able to by the end of the season or maybe end of third season but we'll see Instead, it would be something more unique to Subaru's personal desires. What is Subaru's personal desires? Protect Amelia. Love Amelia. Everything is about Amelia. He has this desire to protect his friends and loved ones. A lot of it due to selfish reasons, and that's totally fine, right? But how is it going to be unique? Betrugus' desires. Let's think about that for a second. Why did Betrugus have unseen hands? Right? What is an unseen hand? Well, it's supposed to be invisible hands, and there's a lot of different hands. He loves Satala so much. He wants Satala so badly. He is number one Satala simp. If we think about the unseen aspect of it and tie in with how he was upset when other people could see the unseen hand, could it be that the power is invisible because of his desire to monopolize Sat Satala's love? Right? And that's how it manifested like that. A hand of his lover? True. We've seen Satala show up and use unseen hands. It seems like it's unseen hand. It looks like, you know, purple hand things. Puck also make a direct comparison too. So Satala does have those powers. But maybe it's a thing of he loves her so much that he wanted something just like Satala's. Maybe. Maybe. Right? Maybe Satala has powers that Regulus also has, if we're going to assume that everything that Satala's powers is based on, you know, what other Archbishops also has. Maybe not. But the hands I do see. We've seen the purple hands most of the times. Satala and Betrugus using it, so maybe there's that connection. And the invisible part, 
maybe this is a little bit reaching of trying to psychoanalyze his love and wanting to monopolize that shit. Similar to how Satala was maybe upset at Subaru for telling Amelia that I can return by death and then Satala made the intentional decision to kill her because this is supposed to be our secret. And then our secret in this context is Betrugus and Satala, right? Their secret and his unseen hand is the manifestation of that. I don't know. ...as the previous holder. Instead, it would be something more unique to Subaru's personal desires. Efforts are not appreciated or seen. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, um, beyond just like the power of it, but to think about the invisibility aspect and how it's supposed to be special for him and Satala, yeah? Maybe. Maybe. So, the witch factor that allows people to use authorities is what Echidna activated. Cool. And I wonder if an archbishop has only one authority or multiple authorities. It'd be cool to see, you know, un uh, like, like, authority of sloth, unseen hand, and then authority of sloth, two, and then fucking unseen toes. And it's also what qualified Subaru to enter the ruins. Okay. Echidna was trying to make it clear that Subaru was a very special person. Witch factor stimulated, activated. Now, qualification to enter the ruins. Amelia doesn't have a witch factor, but she still has the qualifications. To her, he was an exception among exceptions. His current path put him far ahead of schedule over what she was expecting. What are you talking about here? Hold up, I gotta take a piss. I gotta think really hard, so like, I'm not gonna just sit here and try to fucking rush the reaction, so hold on tight. All right, I'm back. Okay, there was something interesting Akid, uh, Annie said about Subaru's like pace or growth. Akidna was trying to make it clear that Subaru was a very special person. Very special. To her, he was an exception among exceptions. He is. His current path put him far ahead of schedule over what she was expecting. His current path put him ahead of schedule of what she was expecting. Implying Akidna knows about his regression power. She's kind of like Orsted right now, right? In terms of knowing how different people are supposed to be at different phases during a timeline. Like, hey, Eris, you're not supposed to be this strong yet. Paul's not supposed to be a son, you know? She seems to understand how he should be at this moment, but he's a lot ahead of schedule. Why is he ahead of schedule? Due to the regression power and being able to opt... Or maybe he got super lucky and got the... Like, having the witch factor was... Not something supposed to happen just yet. How much does she know? But it sounds like she does know. But he was much less aware of what was going on than what she felt he needed. For starters, he needed to know a lot more about the witches, the tomb, and even sanctuary. Akedina was speaking as if Subaru's path was one that had been planned from the very beginning. Hmm. He couldn't fully understand what she was trying to say, but when she mentioned sanctuary, that was all Subaru needed to hear in order to decide it was finally time to leave. Even though Echidna was offering literally every historical detail relating back to the time when she was alive 400 years ago. Another 400 years mentioned. What do we have now? We have Echidna, we have White Whale, and we have Bieko. Every one of them 400 years. Something significant happened 400 years ago. Echidna was offering literally every historical detail relating back to the time when she was alive 400 years ago. Yeah, she was alive 400 years ago. She was not born. But she expands upon that. Okay, but the 400 is a very significant number. Subaru had zero- I guess that's when Zay died, right? She was still around 400 years ago, implying that's when she died. Yeah, probably. Interest in learning about any of it. Sure, getting to know more about the Witch Factor or Sanctuary would have been nice, but Amelia needed to be found- Well, she said she was still around 400 years ago. Not like she died. 
Anyways, there's a significance with the 400 number though. But first, when Echidna saw this, the overwhelming presence that she previously possessed had it now deteriorated into nothing more than that of an ordinary girl's. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys like it better when she starts acting all cute and funny? Because, like, I don't know. Of course, it gives us more uh, funny moments and slice of life moments, but to have, like, a formidable witch to take it all seriously and then the immersion is ruined, I don't know. Kind of half and half, right? Like, moments like this, it's cute, it's funny. But when you're trying to take the story super seriously and to be threatened and be... Because I was not scared of Echidna. You know? During the speech talking about the different witches, yeah, it was kind of scary, a little bit ominous, but... I didn't feel threatened or, like, because I just see a hot girl and she's acting all cute and making jokes about drinking body fluid and... You know, it just, like... A part of me is like, I wish that they really took it super seriously and had this tone of like, you cannot fuck around in front of a witch or something. But right before Subaru was about to leave, one final question of great importance popped into his head. What? He wanted to know if she knew anything about the witch oh, called Archbishops. Good question! Unfortunately, that was a term that Echidna had never heard before. Okay, okay. So, what does this imply? Well, this implies that Echidna, you know, straight up doesn't know anything going on outside of the sanctuary because she's just locked up in here, and Archbishop's concept did not happen when she was around. So, I thought that, like, but, like, this is Echidna, not Satala. Does Satala know the existence of Archbishop's? Oh, for sure she does know, right? Because she said, Betrigus, you're not the one, and slapped him away. But Echidna doesn't know. But still, Regulus exists. Archbishop of Greed. I thought like each witch, respect to their sin, gives a candidate of the cult the witch factor representing their sin. That's what I thought was going on, but clearly this is not the case. Echidna and Regulus have never met. So who really is the leader of the cult? Maybe there's no specific leader, but you're telling me that just this whole system exists with archbishops and gospels? How does this all make sense? Well, and I, I need to see if Regulus ever mentions the uh, Day of the Ordeal. I haven't heard Lai or other Archbishops mention the Day of the Ordeal. Because the Day of the Ordeal is to, quote-unquote, resurrect Satala by having her soul possess perhaps Amelia's body, right? So if other people are also mentioning that in the Archbishops, then I can maybe think that Satala and them have the connection. But the other witches, like Greed, Echidna, don't know shit about Archbishops. It did, however, go to stir her innate curiosity. As if the roles were now reversed, Akedina wanted to hear all about these so-called archbishops. Mm. But there was no point in discussing it any further since it was- But even if she didn't know what the term archbishop was, she knew what the sloth witch factor was, right? This is a fact. She knows what the sloth arch, uh, witch factor is. Meaning, back in the day, even before archbishops were around, witch factors existed, and it can also just go in- people and you can activate and i'm sure she knows that like the authority of sloth and shit so all of those existed before archbishops existed but why who was using those authorities back then were the witches doing that shit i don't know so many fucking questions now that echidna doesn't even know what the archbishops are it was clear that echidna had no knowledge on their authorities the damage they did or the methods of repairing them huh. there was nothing that she could say that would help him save rem a goal that shared equal importance with the one to find Amelia. True, because now we can't just ask, you know, if we kill the Archbishop of Gluttony, and, you know, the authority of Gluttony is what takes away the memories and names, if we kill that person that has that authority, then is it possible? Also, oh, wait, 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 wait! I got an idea. I got an idea. So, lie, which factor, authority of Gluttony, eats names. But... Is it possible to give the name and the memories back? Just like how Lai will bite and consume the memories, can he puke the memories out in that same sense, right? Not just take, but can you give it back? And if the giving back is possible, right? If the giving back is possible, we kill Lai, we take his witch factor, we put it in us, we activate that shit. We now have authority of gluttony. Give the memory and names back. Boom. Boom. And the whole name of Subaru Pleiades. The Subaru logo. All about... The Subaru is a uniter. Remember the celestial constellations theory. Uniter. 
But the power wouldn't be the same. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, not the same power. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. All right, I take it back. We torture lie into giving Rem's memory and names back. I don't know. I wonder if that's possible, though. I wonder if it's possible to give the memory and name back like he could, like took it. What's even more important to note? His desire to save Rem. I take back what I didn't take back and I take it back again. The theory is still good. The, the witch factor authority will manifest onto the person's desires. Subaru's desire to save Rem will now create a power where instead of consuming the names, it's all about giving the names and memories back because he's gluttonous in uh, trying to save people. Sure, that's enough mental gymnastics, right? Hey, 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 not bad, right? Okay, hold up, hold up. Let's do some mental gymnastics. Was that Akidana just showed that she has nothing to do with the witch's cult? If that is in fact true, then it- Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Repairing them. Go back. It was clear that Akedina had no knowledge on their authorities, the damage they did, or the methods of repairing them. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that she could say that would help him save Rem. A goal that shared equal importance with the one to find Amelia. Yep. What's even more important to note was that Akedina just showed that she has nothing to do with the witch's cult. Nothing if to that do with is it. In fact right, but I need to know if like... The witch's cult is specifically just all about Satala. And obviously, the witch has died a long time ago, right? Only Satala kind of exists in a sealed away fashion. So, is the witch's cult in all the other archbishops just for Satala? I need to see Regulus or Lai mention the day of the ordeal, but I've never seen them talk about it. True, then it makes you wonder where exactly the witch cult is getting their powers from. Anyway, as... I'm gonna assume Satala, because she's the only one, right? Dubru was about to leave through the portal. We know that Akidana's compensation was a formal pact to never speak of their little tea party. Formal pact? Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a vow. A pact with the dragon is what the royal family and the dragon made. And it has an, an implication about a return of investment. And that still has not been delivered. So the next person who becomes king or queen will have to deliver on that return of investment. A contract is with spirits and other people. A covenant is with the dragon that I still have no idea about. An oath is what Echidna made with Puck and there's punishment according to it. And this is a vow where we lost the memories. She said, let's make a vow. You can't, you can't tell other people. But beyond that, she seems to have just erased her memories. So I think that this is, again, the language, the verbiage, the words used in ReZero. It's got to be very careful about it. What wasn't mentioned after this was when Akidana stated that Subaru was already bound by a pact of a similar nature. Akidana felt <laughs> to never speak of their little tea party. What wasn't mentioned after this was when Akidana stated that Subaru was already bound by a pact of a similar nature. Oh yeah, Satala. Well, I don't... Is it a pact? It can't... It's, it's probably an... It's got... <laughs> I'm gonna assume it's about not letting other people know about that fucking power. And if so, there's like a punishment. Akidana felt that Subaru should have no problem following her pact since it's one that he already has experience with. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's Satala. Who else could it be? It's, 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 only, it's only Satala, right? When was that pact made? At the end of the Loot Cellar run. Yep, at the end of the Loot Cellar run episode 1. Yes. Once again, Subaru had no idea what Echidna was talking about. But the way she spoke as if she was referring to a forbidden topic made it seem as if she was describing return by death. Yeah, it's Perhaps gotta be, right? his inability to talk about that was due to the very same pact that he was making here with Echidna. I mean, it seems like it, right? What else could it be? I mean, we've seen Biko and Subaru make a contract once, but this is not that. It's, it has to be. And again, the usage of the word pact is kind of pissing me off because I don't know if this is really true, like if it's a pact or not. But Echidna's a vow, in, at least in the anime subtitles I saw. So is this also a vow with Satala then? I don't know. And if that's the case, then did we just forget the memories that Subaru made with Satala? Right? Think about this. If it's the same properties of how we fucking forgot, right? It's a pact, the anime subs are wrong? Then what's the return on investment? Because the dragon made a pact with the royal family. And he's expecting a return on investment on that, right? That was clearly stated in, episode, in, in this first season. What is the return on investment for the pact with Echidna right now of not letting other people know? I'm not sure. Maybe there's never a return on investment. Maybe there doesn't always have to be. 
But if we think about this scene with Echidna and Subaru and how he forgot the memories, can we then assume that the uh, the the the, con the whatever promise was made with Echidna was also the reason why Subaru doesn't remember Satala? Is that possible? I don't know. I'm not sure. Echidna said. The thanking part had to do with, like, when you get to the trial, I wonder how you'll feel about that, right? Because that's, like, the T, the witch factor being stimulated. That's something she helped us out. She's saying, when, you, when the time comes for the trial, like, I wonder how you'll feel about that. But I don't know. But I'm going to assume that this is returned by death, what she's talking about. These are all subtle hints to mysteries that are slowly being unraveled. Stuff that wasn't included in the anime. What was the point of this scene? What was the, what was the point of the licking, bro? There is no point, it's just fan service. For all subtle hints to mysteries that are slowly being unraveled. Stuff that wasn't included in the anime. In any case, that was the witch's tea party as it took place in the novels. Okay. From it, we learned that Echidna is the witch of greed who personally yep. possesses an insatiable hunger for knowledge. It's her boundless curiosity towards the unknown that seems to define her greed. For the past 400 years, the ruins have served as Echidna's grave in which her soul is forever trapped. Only. So now that's confirmed, right? So even though Anina said it was around 400 years ago, now it's like 400 years ago. She's been stuck here. So White Whale got created 400 years ago, apparently. Biko got created 400 years ago, apparently, right? Because she's 400 years old. What else is there? Echidna. Is there anything else? Black Serpent. Wonder if Black Serpent's also 400. Because I'm going to assume that the White Whale and Black Serpents are the... The, um... The monsters, the beasts, plural, that Daphne, the Witch of Gluttony, apparently made, right? Only those who possess a witch factor may enter and potentially gain access to her seemingly infinite knowledge from the Era of Witches. Era Learning of Witches. Era of Witches. 400 years ago, what was it like, bro? I wanna know! Isn't something she can offer since she doesn't seem to know much about the current period. Which is rather weird considering that she seems to know almost everything about Subaru. That's the interesting thing, right? How does Echidna know about Subaru's trajectory? Like, in this current state of time, you're ahead of schedule. Why would Echidna know that but have no understanding of the outside world? Probably has to do with some sort of connection to Satala and the Witch's Miasma, right? Anytime we're confused about why Subaru is so special, why can he fucking, you know, see the unseen hand, we still don't really know about that, right? Why does he remember Rem even though no one else remembers Rem, right? Think about that. Why was everyone's names and memories for Rem, you know, nobody fucking remembers Rem, but Subaru still does. Clearly because he has a connection to the witches, so I'm gonna assume that due to this vague concept as a connection, right? Echidna probably understands that. That, as well as who Echidna was before she ended up trapped, are mysteries that will end up being solved later. Okay. Now let's move on to the rest of the episode. Oof. The reason Garfield knew exactly where Subaru was, was because he had used his nose to track Subaru's scent. scent. He wasn't tracking Miasma? the smell that everyone typically attributes to the witch, but instead a normal one that Garfield wasn't familiar with. So he doesn't- Garfield doesn't smell the witch's miasma, but he tracked him because he smells like a fucking neat from Japan. That's how he knew there were outsiders within Sanctuary. You see, Garfield is a demi-human related by blood to Frederica, so it makes sense that his physical strength and senses are much better than the average person. He's also fucking retarded. I'm sorry. He is so stupid. Am I specious for saying that? I'm just calling how it is, bro. Now, while in the carriage on the way to Sanctuary, we got to learn a bit more about Garfield and Frederica's relationship. The two didn't seem to get along too well. Hmm. Any sort of conversation that brought up Frederica's name just made Garfield want to disregard it as quickly as possible. Sibling issues? Big sister, little bro drama? What's going on? It was clear that he didn't want anything to do with her. Also, how did he get that scar? Did Frederica give him the scar? Did Ram give him the scar? I don't know. And based on the way that Frederica spoke about Garfield, that seemed to be the case for her as well. The two of them were just living in their own separate worlds. Garfield then shifted the topic to the place known as Sanctuary. While talking about it, he referred to it once as the Tomb of the Witch of Greed. This was a term that neither Otto nor Subaru had ever heard before. Hmm. In fact, Subaru didn't even know that other witches aside from the Witch of Envy existed at all. When did we hear about the lore about the Witch of Envy consuming all six other witches? 
It was in season one. Where did we hear that though? Who told us that? Biko. Rumor has it. Legend has it. Yeah, Biko was like, legend has it. Legend has it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember that. That was the episode where she dropped so much lore about how Satala also got sealed by the hero, dragon, and, what, and sage. But like, Subaru doesn't remember that shit? He was not paying attention, huh? Likely due to a side effect from the pact that he made with Echidna. What? No, 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 no. This is erasing Echidna's memories, right? That the whole events happened. I understand that. But he should also have a prior understanding of other existence of witches because Biko mentioned about the rumor has it, legend has it. But Echidna's vow is not erasing what Biko told him in season one, right? There's, there's no shot that's happening, right? So Garfield went on to explain how Envy supposedly killed all the other witches by eating them. Yeah. Because there wasn't much left with regards to historical records on the matter, no one is actually really sure how they died. What they do know for sure though is that after Envy was the Satala. only witch left, the world was led into a state Half of terror of like no one had ever seen before. Yep. That being the case, the witch cult became devout followers of Envy and Envy alone. Mmm. Here it is. Witch cult, only Envy. So, again, I thought that, like, I don't know, all these dudes were aware of other witches, but they are specifically just for Satala. But we need to see Regulus men talk about Satala. I want to see, Sat like, Regulus or other people talk about Satala. They refuse to acknowledge the existence of any other witches. Even hearing the mention of any of their names is enough to send the cult on a destructive rampage. Really? Wow, interesting cult lore. They must never be known, because... Satala's super envious. She's envious about many things, but I guess even to the point like, I don't know, she was envious of their powers, their jealousy. I don't know. But she consumed them all. And you're not allowed to talk about them. Nope. Nope. They're banned names. Don't you dare mention that shit. Only me. Only me monopolize your love to me, me, me. Huh. To clarify what that meant, Garfield mentioned a southern city in the Valachia Empire that started spreading rumors of a different witch. What? Supposedly a media that previously belonged to her had been discovered. A meteor that belonged to a witch has been discovered in the southern continent of Valachia. And this is kind of where the Great Waterfall is down below, right? The a media that previously belonged They refuse to acknowledge the existence of any other witches. Even hearing the mention of any of their names is enough yeah. to send the cult on a destructive rampage. To clarify what that meant, Garfield mentioned a southern city in the Valachia, Valachia Empire, Empire that started spreading rumors of a different witch. Supposedly, media. a media that previously belonged to her had been discovered. Eventually, this caused a witch that wasn't Envy to gain prominence in the area. Uh-oh, jealousy. Or Envy, sorry. Uh-oh. So they're getting, they're getting clout. So this is... So they found a media belonging to another witch. And this is after a long time ago, after witches have been consumed. Now the clout... A lot of people are glazing this witch. Something that the witch cult wouldn't allow. Oh, shit. Even though this city was one of the most fortified in Valachia, a Titan. single archbishop was all that was needed to destroy it. What? All because of these newly spread rumors of heresy. Who did it? Sure enough, the city and all its people were completely wiped out. That's why it became prohibited to speak of the witches at all. Oh, wow. That's crazy lore, man. Valachia. Meteor belonged to a witch. Who knows? Who knows? But then an archbishop went there and destroyed them all. It's just like, holy shit. And then the name. The, so you can't even... So I thought Satala was a taboo because she's ravaged half the world. But beyond that, there's like other reasons too. Huh. It was too dangerous to discuss anything related to them. Crazy. Especially if you weren't talking about the Witch of Envy. Anyway, that was all the information. Witch of Envy, again, I thought the whole Envy stems from, like, Subaru's love, right? About how she's so starved for love. I mean, the common, the term love is constantly spoken from everybody, right? Like, Sloth, right? Betrigus is always saying, you know, we, pay, we must repay with love, 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 right? But she's envious, too, if other people get clout. All eyes must be on her. Yo, this is the most pick-me bitch ever. Sata Loki, the most insecure... All eyes on me. Please give me more followers. Please give me more engagement. Guys, why do I even bother posting? You guys don't even like my comments anymore. Oh my god. Oh, she's so fucking desperate for attention. ...that Garfield could offer. Anything else would have to be gotten from Roswell. Which brings us now to when they All arrived right. at Sanctuary. The only difference from the encounter with Ram was with what happened after. As Ram was taking them to go see Roswell, Amelia didn't let go of Subaru's hand. Ooh. Instead, she continued to hold it as she walked beside him. 
not out of romantic intent as a woman loving a man, but a motherly figure holding the hand of a child who is sad and alone. A minor detail that I'm sure a lot of you Amelia fans would appreciate. Now, when the two arrived to see Roswell in such a sorry state, all sorts of topics came up into the conversation. But the one that didn't make it into the anime was the one about what happened to Subaru. Subaru took a few moments to explain how Amelia was supposed to be the one teleported to the ruins instead of him. Mm -hmm. The only plausible explanation for this was that Frederica had planned for this to happen. In the letter. But I thought he took that necklace out of instinct because he thought something bad's gonna happen and he's the one that went to the ruins though, right? You tell me Frederica anticipated Subaru's like impulse action? Instead of him. The only plausible explanation for this was that Frederica had planned for this to happen. I thought it's, it, I thought it, I thought it's just one of those again, these there's a lot of moments in ReZero over and over again where Subaru does something out of impulse and it just kind of works out. It was fair to assume that she knew the barrier would render Amelia unconscious, then the crystal yeah. would have her teleported into the forest. Okay, I mean we know that because like you remember it's like a half-blood shit. This hypothesis was only further reinforced when Ram mentioned that the crystal wasn't even necessary to bypass the barrier. So really? Frederica was undoubtedly scheming something. It was clear that she was deeply involved with the present situation that everyone currently found themselves in. Absolutely, I mean it's even hinted that Frederica apparently like put the villagers in, the, in, in locked up and at, at the end of the day, she's just taking orders from Roswell. A situation that both Amelia and Subaru initially assumed to be because of Garfield. Before anyone Roswell. could clear this false assumption. There is no way this idiot is the mastermind of everything right now. Everyone here is a fucking pawn. Roswell is puppeteering everything according to his plans. Before anyone could clear this false assumption, it was then that Garfield walked into the room which triggered a fairly tense moment. Amelia looked as if she was ready to start fighting Garfield right there. <laughs> Let's go, Amelia. And it didn't help that Garfield was always ready to accept a fight either. EMT! Only after Ram stepped Ooh! in and smashed an iron tray over his head did- <laughs> Why did they cut this? It would have been peak! My girl Ram, bro, she just fucking dropped an iron tray on his head. <laughs> I love Ram so much. Everyone calm down. <laughs> You'd think that a hot-tempered person like him wouldn't let this slide. Yeah. But Ram seemed to be the only person who could yes. keep Garfield under control. Absolutely. Garfield acknowledges Ram as his master. He's fine with Ram stepping on him. He's very feisty and strong and stubborn, but like, the masochist within him, it can't like, disobey Ram. It was actually fairly common to see Garfield lower his guard around her. Only after Subaru saw the way that Garfield looked at her did he realize that Garfield had to think for Ram. Mm. When Subaru brought it up, Garfield didn't even try to deny it. Instead, he just found it normal for him to be attracted to her. In any case. Absolutely. There needs to be more Ram Sims, man. Ram is honestly such a funny character, such an interesting character. Also has close associations with Roswell, so plot-wise, again, like, does she have two horns right now? I don't know, because like, Ram got erased. Does that mean Ram is now the lone child, like the single child of the only clan? Who knows, but like, I think that Ram, I, I hope, Ram has a lot of, like, plot relevance in the story this season. Since brute force wasn't the cause of their imprisonment, that meant the only thing left that could be responsible for keeping them there was the barrier. That was only partially right, though. There were a couple other factors contributing to their confinement. To clarify what was mentioned in the anime, the barrier doesn't mean much to anyone who isn't a half-blood. Mm -hmm. Both Roswell and Subaru could pass through it whenever they like. The reason Roswell didn't was because Garfield wouldn't let any of the other villagers leave until he what would happen if Subaru was half Asian, half something? Would that count as half blood? Yes, right? Like an interracial baby, right? Half Japanese, half white. I don't know. Would Subaru get fucked here because of that? Uh, it's a totally random statement, but that would count as half blood, right? Villagers leave until he broke the barrier. But now that Amelia herself was a prisoner, they're all human. But when you say half blood, you're not saying half species blood. When you say half blood, right? Human, human. Different races, different racial blood. Beast man, human. Ha human elf, elf blood, human blood. Half. It's gotta be like half of a species. Can't be like human, human. Interracial humans, fine. <laughs> but like animal, beast, human. 
<laughs> human it's different species half species this is it half blood is half species everyone was now in the same boat now you'd think that they could just carry all the half bloods out of the barrier but unfortunately that wasn't an option either to explain more on why that was a pink-haired elf girl appeared at the front door of roswell's house Finally. She inserted herself into the conversation to explain that any half-blood who tries to leave the barrier would just become a soulless husk. Soulless Initially, husk? Subaru thought that this was the same elf girl from the episode before. Is this Amelia being a soulless husk when she entered the barrier? I don't know. Just become a soulless husk. Initially, Subaru thought- I'm fine with this being explained in episode 5. That this was the same elf girl from the episode before. But as he was about to ask if she was, I, I'm not going to stop watching this just because it's rearranged later. It doesn't really matter. I, I don't mind. Ram quickly intervened to get him to stop talking. For some reason, she didn't want him to mention the elven girl he saw earlier. At least not while this other elf was around anyway. She introduced herself as the village's representative. An elder who goes by the name of Ryuzu Bilma. Ryuzu. Super elder. Of course she's a fucking elder. Lolly shows feet. Super said it was like a doll-like. But of course the lolly's an elder. Figured that it was only a matter of time before he would eventually come across the lolly hag stereotype. Lolly sure hag. Enough, there was lolly baba. Standing right in front of him. It was pretty <laughs> Is Super gonna call this lolly baba? That's like how he calls Biko drill lolly. Standing right in front of him. It this, this elder has to be 400 years old, right? It has to be 400? It was pretty weird to see Ryuzu's mature demeanor clash with her younger appearance. Neither Amelia nor Subaru knew the best way to respond to her. I mean, even the way she acted on the outside made it seem as if she was an older woman. In any case, the reason for her appearance was to explain the manner in which the barrier capped Half-Bloods trapped. When someone like Amelia comes into contact with the barrier, mm -hmm. it's not entirely accurate to say that she'll just lose consciousness. It's more correct to say that it's her very soul being repelled from her body. This is a great example. I totally see what's going on here. <laughs> the soul will never be able to leave the barrier, got it. The body can, but the soul can't. If she tries to force her way past the barrier, then her soul will be separated from her body, and her body will become nothing more than an empty shell. Okay. So, given that the barrier was harmless to regular people, meant that Roswell's injuries were still unexplained. Yeah, what the fuck happened here? Because it was like, he took the trial, but because he wasn't qualified, he got fucked up like this? So if Subaru never went in to meet Echidna first, and Echidna didn't activate his sloth witch factor and give him resistance, you know, the qualifications, then Subaru too would get fucked up like this. But Amelia, for whatever reason, doesn't need a witch factor at all. Amelia is fine, she is already qualified. This whole qualification is kind of... kind of confusing, because like... I don't know, it sounds like there's either... like, is... Cause like the any of stuff like which factor stimulation is part of why the qualification is there, but if you're mixed blood, then it's just fine. If if you're just mixed blood, then like you 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 are qualified. That's it. And then some other shit is you can have like a witch factor stimulated and have extra resistance, like what a kidna did for Subaru, and that's also qualified. So those are the two different types right now. And Roswell just got fucked up. And it seems like everyone has to face their past. Or at least Subaru does. Yes, it's true that Garfield's physical strength is more than enough to deal this level of damage to Roswell. But the root cause of his severe wounds was nothing more than Roswell just being unqualified to take the trial. Hmm. Those who try to do so yet don't have mixed blood would end up having their flesh repelled and shredded. Damn. All the bandages and blood were finally starting to make sense now. So, did Roswell... He didn't know about this, but he still tried? The fuck? Nah, knowing a guy like this? No, 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 no. This is intentional. This motherfucker is sitting it out to let Subaru solve it again. What is our theory? This dude can regress along with Subaru and uses Subaru as a test rat. Yes, that is still my theory. He said, Subaru, you're not a liability. You're such a wonderful asset. Roswell literally, he didn't say that line specifically, but when we entered, like, he told us Subaru was like, you're such like a valuable, quote unquote, pawn. So like, this injury shit? Nah, bro. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna assume that he did this intentionally. He knew to put himself out so that Subaru can yet again fucking solve the arc and then he can show up later and maybe take credit for it.
There were numerous lacerations across Roswell's upper body as if he'd stood in front of a massive explosion. Ooh. It also didn't help that the wounds showed very little improvement when exposed to healing magic. Subaru couldn't understand why Roswell would even attempt this. It's like almost unhealable? To him, no normal person would expose themselves to such danger while all- Yes, no normal person. But Roswell is not a normal person. This is a pervert clown. He is insane. He is literally like on that Joker level of like- just like the schizo. I, I don't know. I think he's an extremely intelligent person, but he also definitely like he definitely puts him through insane situations, right? I'm sure there is some sort of madness in his brain. So like, I'm still going to assume he did this intentionally. Already knowing the outcome. Perhaps he felt it was his duty as the Lord to at least try. Well, he is very loyal to Echidna. There seems to be a great respect for her. If anything, though. Roswell's actions made it perfectly clear that the trial needed to be treated with the utmost caution. Mm -hmm. After Amelia gained the support of the villagers at the cathedral, the conversation between Ram and Subaru went on a little bit longer. At first, they were wondering if Frederica had planned for Amelia to be the one to enter the ruins. If that was what she truly intended, then Subaru could only wonder what terrible fate awaited her had she gone in there alone. Does Roswell want Amelia to clear it, or does Roswell want Subaru to clear it? It was this maybe both topic that brought forth something a bit more secretive to make sure no one around them would hear ram whispered into subaru's ear a rather shocking bit of information what not everyone who lives in sanctuary wants to be freed from it there's a small minority who find comfort from the shelter the barrier provides oh or is this the group that we're going to talk about being anti amelia that annie has alluded to before it's possible that Frederica could have been working with them in order to foil the plan to remove the barrier. Uh-oh. Just the possibility of that being the case made Subaru worried that perhaps he left Rem and Petra in the hands of someone who couldn't be trusted. <gasps> Frederica's gonna kill them! Fortunately, Ram was confident that Frederica would never go so far as to harm anyone in the mansion. That just wasn't the type of person she was. The man so she'll take them out of the mansion and then harm them. In concern needed to be had with those who wanted to prevent Amelia from dispelling the barrier. They would be the ones that would try to harm her. Ram wasn't sure who they were, but the fact remained that they needed to be wary of this so-called anti-liberation faction. A-L-F. They want to be stuck in the sanctuary. Got it. In addition to all of this, there was also the concern of the pink-haired elf that looked exactly like Ryuzu. Subaru wanted to know why she was being Loli Baba. Unfortunately, that wasn't something Ram was allowed to answer yet. As night began to fall, the time for Amelia's trial drew closer. It was necessary to have several witnesses during such an event. So Garfield and Ryuzu were there to represent Sanctuary. Ram was there as Roswell's proxy, and Subaru was there as Amelia's retainer. When Amelia entered the ruins, Subaru turned to both Ryuzu and Garfield to ask why they'd never attempted the trial themselves. Technically, they were eligible to take the trial, but that didn't mean that they were capable of liberating Sanctuary. Hmm. You see, both Garfield and Ryuzu were restrained by a never-ending pact that binds them to this place. Another pact. This was yet another example of how others treated pacts and oaths with great significance. See, he just talked about oath. He knows what an oath is, but he intentionally used the word pact, meaning the enemy was wrong, and what he's saying is right. Even though Subaru found it to be a hindrance, it was a recurring topic that he just couldn't seem to avoid. Anyway, that pretty much brings us to the end of episode 3. Okay. Does what Petra did count as a pact or an oath? It's a good luck charm. There's no way this is any deep. Just couldn't seem to avoid. Anyway, that pretty much brings us to the end of episode 3. Alright. There was definitely a lot of stuff worth covering this time. So, if you enjoyed learning more about the ReZero story, then be sure to leave a like or comment to show your support. Will do, Mr. Andy News, and hey, there's the video. Please go give him a like, sub to the channel if you haven't. I think that the crazy shit is definitely the tea party stuff. Echidna not knowing of what archbishops are, because, you know, she died 400 years ago, and this has been her you know, gravestone for 400 years, yet she still knows about Subaru and technically his, like, timeline of how much he should have progressed at this point, which implies that his connection to the witches is very deep and for the same reasons as to why he probably still remembers Rem, even though everyone's forgotten, and why Subaru also has, like, you know, which is miasma stacking up, that's Satsula's love for him. All these different events when sometimes other people are affected, but he isn't. I just feel like it has to be something associated with that. More lore about, like, you know, the different continent that was under attack because a meteor for a specific witch got enough clout and Satala 
and the cult of Satala, right? This is not just like any random cult for all the witches. Other witches' names are taboo, bro. You can't say them. It's only Satala. They're false gods, false witches. Only one real witch exists. And you do that shit, it's bad. So very, very interesting lore about the cults, you know, and Echidna and Subaru and the pact, man. The pact that exists in Subaru already, right? We made a pact with Echidna about not telling other people about the sanctuary place and their meeting. But he already had another one. And that's got to be Satala. But he doesn't remember it because maybe it already happened and we intentionally forgot the memories. And that's why Subaru doesn't know Satala is Satala thirsts over him so much, right? Are we getting somewhere with that? I don't really know. But hey, we'll see you next time.